Welcome to this edition of the Lube Page. Lube Page is brought to you by thelubepage.com. And most of you that are viewing this know me. I am Dan Watson, certified lubrication specialist and an AMSOIL synthetic jobber. Today, I promised you in a previous video that we were going to talk about how to read these oil bottles. Now, I know this is not a real good picture that you can see in detail, but always on the back, on the back of all the oil bottles you ever pick up, they're going to have a lot of technical information. Now, for some of you veterans out there, please bear with me and be patient because understand that most people have no reason to know a whole lot about engine oil or lubricants, okay? The only reason that they would take an interest is because they have an application, they have a car, they have a truck, whatever they happen to have. They may have a, a, a set of uh, ATVs, they may have motorcycles, water scooters, whatever they have. Okay, That's when they're gonna finally get interested in what's this oil all about? How's it made? How do I know if it's any good? Well, the first thing is you really need to know how to read the information that's on the bottle because that's your first step in buying the right product. Okay, so just like you have consumer protection, uh, you have the underwriter laboratories and all these things for electrical and electronic components, there are organizations that are responsible for producing the required uh, performance characteristics of these products, these oils, so that the manufacturer can be satisfied that their product, the engine in whatever it happens to be, it's an internal combustion engine. It could be in a road grader, it could be in a motorcycle, it could be in a scooter, it could be in a, in a ski boat, but wherever that internal combustion engine is, the manufacturer of it has stipulated certain requirements of lubricants that will protect that equipment and allow it to run well, let's just say allowed to run at least as long as they're warranty. <laughs> I'm sure that's what they're mostly interested in. But for you, the consumer, you want it to go on for months, years, uh, hundreds of thousands of miles, if that's what you want. So you want to make sure that you're putting the right product in your application, whatever that might be. So the first place we start is on this bottle. Now, the organizations that support this information, there's the American Petroleum Institute, and you would more likely see them all the time referred to as the API. There's the Society of Automotive Engineers. That's usually seen as the SAE. Now the American Petroleum Institute or the API, they're going to put a, a rating on this oil that we'll call its classification. And we'll go into that in more detail, but just they decide the classification, which is the performance standard of the oil what it has to perform to, to get that classification. Then the Society of Automotive Engineers, they are the people who come up with the viscosity measurement, which is a requirement by the manufacturer that certain viscosity levels, those viscosity levels are determined by the Society of Automotive Engineers. They come up with the rating system for viscosity. Now, if you have a European auto, you're gonna find that they, on that bottle, you're gonna see these things called ACEA. Now, that is the designation that comes from the European Association, which is the, you get it with the A, it's the association, and it's French. So we'll just use the English construction, okay? ACEA, Engineers Association. So it's the uh, Auto Associ Engineers Association, okay? That's a European standard. Now, Europeans set a little different standards than we have in the API. That's why for you guys out there with European applications to know, you need to be looking on the bottle in the future and looking for those ACEA um, classifications. So let's get right back to what the classifications are. When I look at the API classification that would be on this bottle, what I'm gonna find is a series that's gonna run, that's gonna have um, S, L, S, M, S, N, and S, P. Current is S, P. Now, that's a classification that says that that oil had to meet certain testing standards in order to achieve that classification. If you look in the owner's manual of your car, 
it's going to say that you must run an oil that meets the API classification of whatever it happens to be. Believe it or not, uh, if you have an older car, it may say SG, SH, SL. You can see how those just keep running one after the other in the alphabet to the latest one is SP. In North American oil, we'll say the American standard that's set for North America, really even South America, this Western hemisphere, uh, all of those classifications supersede the previous. So when you go into the parts store and you buy an oil and it says it's SP rated, then it means that it is back rated to cover all the previous ratings up till that time. Doesn't work the other way. You can't buy an SL oil and it qualify as an SP, but you can buy an SP oil and it supersedes the SL requirements. That sounds a little bit like strange. Why can't you go both ways? Well, it has to do primarily with <laughs> a lot to do with the EPA and the, uh, the levels of additives and so forth that are allowed in the oil. Those are different things we'll get into in future videos. So you've got the API rating. That's important for you to see. Then you've got the SAE viscosity rating. This is the one that I get the most questions on that people understand the least. And I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying that that's an area I want to make sure that I clarify for you that you'll understand. A 5W30, a 0W30, a 10W30, what does that mean? What's the first number mean? What's the second number mean? Why do we have so many of them? Like we have 0W20, 0W30, 5W30, we have 0W40, 5W40, 10W40, we have 20W50, we have 10W60. My goodness, how can we have so many different of these viscosity ratings? Well, here's the first part you need to know. In that number, the first number, the 10W, 5W, 0W, 20W, remember I said W in every one of those numbers. Now here's what's important. Just consider the W as meaning winter rating, winter rating for the W, okay? Now the second number in all of those is what we call the operational viscosity number. It's what's measured at temperatures that would be approximating operation for that oil. It's in fact all tested at 212 degrees, whole historical reasons for that, but just understand second number is measured at 212, the first number is actually not even measured with the same type of apparatus, but it is to determine how easily that oil will flow in extreme cold conditions. That's the reason why you will see many times that if you have one of those temperature graphs that's in your owner's manual, that the colder the ambient temperature that you live in, then that W number keeps going down from 10 to five to zero W uh, in order that that oil will pump on those extremely cold mornings that you start up that car. So here's, here's an important fact to keep straight. When you live in a climate like we live here in where I live in the Orlando, Florida area, or a mild climate where you never reach any temperatures below 20 degrees hardly ever, then here's the fact. It really doesn't matter when you're buying a 30 weight oil, if you buy a 0W, a 5W, or a 10W, 30, because you will never exercise the need for the winter rating to really come into play. So all you're really interested in is the second number being your operational viscosity of 30, okay? So that's a fact that comes up so many times because people say, well, I can't use uh, the 5W30 because my book says I need to use a 0W30. And the answer is, are you planning on visiting uh, the home office of Amsoil in Duluth in January? Or do you think maybe you're gonna stay, uh, you know, south of Tennessee for the winter? And if you are, then again, that winter rating is not critical. However, if you live in Canada, that winter rating is important to you and you want to make sure that you keep <laughs> the zero w range because you get the easiest flow under the most extreme cold conditions 
Okay, so we've talked about the API rating, which is the classification. We've talked about the viscosity rating on the bottle. Okay, now there's a couple other things you'll find on the bottle at times, which might be in some cases, they may even have the manufacturer's specifications, which may be for like Dexos for uh, General Motors. And what that's telling you is General Motors puts an extra requirement on there. That oil must meet Dexos requirements for them, okay? You might find on the oil that there's, if it's a diesel oil, there's a Caterpillar or a Cummings uh, specification. Those are manufacturer specifications. So if you've got one of those applications in your owner's manual that you have a um, Cummins turbo diesel pickup, then you'll probably see that there's a Cummins specification for engine oil and it may list that. It'll probably just list that it's in the diesel world uh, that the current classification is there. And let me mention that quick before we end up with this, uh, coming to the end of this. Diesel oils have different classifications and performance standards than gasoline engine oils. And motorcycle oils have some different specifications than automotive oil. What am I saying here? What I'm telling you is that again, it's always important to look for the classification that's required for your equipment on that label, on that bottle, because one shoe doesn't fit all. It's gotten much more complicated today when the engine manufacturers and the equipment manufacturers to make sure that your oil meets their specific classification, their need, okay? And while we're talking about that, how would we know if any of these met anything? Well. There's one more organization. It's called the ASTM, and that's the American Society for Testing Materials. They developed the tests that are required to certify these oils. One of the things about those tests that's extremely important is they are repeatable no matter who does the test. In other words, you can't uh, affect the test if you do the test according to the procedure that's outlined. Why is that important? because when people start using unspecified tests, many times they can, uh, shall we just say, uh, bias that test towards getting the result they want by the way that they perform it. And that is not gonna happen with the ASTM testing. So that's why ASTM tests are developed in order to uh, test these oils to make sure they meet the classification requirements that the manufacturer is specifying and then once that's set into place, the API will use that specification to meet that standard. So I hope this information is useful to you. Now, you can go to my website, thelubepage.com, and there's articles written about this type of information that are there. And so again, that's thelubepage.com. You see it up behind me on the, on the banner, and there's a lot of very detailed information. But we're gonna go at this in a piece by piece uh, video outline as we move ahead. Uh, our next video, we're gonna take a look at viscosity and its effects because it is the critical, critical measurement for the correct lubrication application. So until then, this is Dan Watson, Certified Lubrication Specialist, wishing you safe driving. See you on the internet.